So, uh, 3D printing is basically taking a bunch of geometric shapes and anything that we would draw in the computer that would eventually end up at a fabricator's shop, they would take large slabs of material or big sheets of material and they would take away from it to end up with your final shape or product. Much like this thing right here. It starts out as a big block and then we kind of carve out, mill out, drill out and end up with your final product. 3D printing takes the reverse approach and what we say is instead of taking material away we're going to add material where we need it so it's a little less wasteful, it's a bit more efficient and overall you end up with much more freedom of design so when you draw a block for example the software takes an image of that and it slices it similar to what an MRI does and it makes very very fine layers and it's going to create basically a tool path for the machine to follow and squirt out molten plastic, okay? Now this plastic is in a heated cabinet, it's heated to about 300 degrees Celsius, and as soon as that hot extruder leaves it, it cools instantly. So it's kind of like a glue gun, and if you were to move that glue gun across a paper, you're leaving a trail of hot glue that dries or cools pretty quickly. The 3D printer is doing basically the same thing, only at a much faster rate and much, much more precise. So here at uh, Westchester Community College, we have a uh, we have about three three 3D printers and one 3D laser scanner. And what this allows us to do is we can either draw or design something from scratch on the computer digitally or we can take an existing object like this from the lab or something that may be damaged or you know we need a spare of and we can place this on a turntable that's going to shoot lasers at it and get all the nooks and crannies and replicate that in a 3D point cloud. We could take that information, plug it into this software and then we end up with, after a few hours, an ABS model of exactly what that part was. So what we're looking at here is a desktop stand model and this is the red object here and the computer slices everything into mini layers that are about a hundred thousandths of an inch in thickness and then anything that's free flowing or not supported by the platform is supported by this extra filler white material here. This material here is uh, ABS plastic. And then this material here is similar, but less dense. And we have downstairs in one of our labs a, uh, a warm or a heated acid bath where we drop the parts in there. And then after a few hours, it disintegrates all of this white support material and you end up with a clean, full 3D model. So right here we have one of our uh, manufacturing students' projects, and this was actually a part of a, uh, a lab project where they had to make each of these components out of either steel, aluminum, or brass. And at the end of manufacturing or fabricating all dozen or so parts, they would end up with a small motor that would run off compressed air. So after the student took uh, CAD 1 and 2, he decided to design all the parts uh, in 3D and print them all out so he could have a, uh, a synthetic or a, a 3D printed version of the whole project. And then over here we have some of the CAD 1 projects where students are learning how to create shapes, components, and parts. And what they've done is they've taken their simple 2D models and that they've elaborated on them to create uh, a 3D representation of it. So that way when they're drawing it in CAD 1 uh, for future classes, they can say, hey, here's the, the paper part and here goes the, you know, the actual physical part. So the, uh, the unique aspect of 3D printing is, regardless of the size of your models or the objects that you intend to design, uh, the software that's bundled with the machinery, uh, depending on which vendor or which specific type you have, uh, you're able to draw something that could be anywhere from a few inches to a few feet in length, width, and height, and you can scale it down to something that's much more manageable and usable, and it still serves as a proof of concept or you know to test functionality. 
and we like to use this with uh, students in CAD so that they could see everything that they're actually drawing and we don't have to be very wasteful per se or you know we can get a, a box full of many different parts and show them all of their work in real life.